Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining from. Welcome to the TDLC webinar, Translating Community-Led Vision into Practice, Applying Yokohama Design Sketchbook in Latin America and Caribbean and beyond. My name is Michiko Kadono from the Tokyo Development Learning Center, and I will be your moderator today. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all our participants connecting from all across the world. Before we begin, uh, please allow me to make a few housekeeping announcements. This seminar will be conducted in a mix of English and Japanese with simultaneous interpretation to English, Japanese, and Spanish. Please use the interpretation icon on the bottom toolbar to select the language you prefer to listen to. You're welcome to write in any comments or questions to the speakers throughout the seminar using the chat function of the Zoom in English or Japanese. So please feel free to do so, and we will have a few minutes toward the end to pick up on those questions. Lastly, we encourage you to share your experience about the seminar on Twitter with hashtag uh, YUDS, standing for Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook, and hashtag cities for all. So uh, without further ado, let, uh, let us get started with the program. At this time, uh, I would like to invite Maitre Das, who is the practice manager of Global Practice of Urban Resilience and Land in the World Bank, to give us the introduction to the seminar, including some background of the World Bank engagement in this topic. Maitre, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Michiko. And uh, again, a classic pandemic greeting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining from. I would really like to welcome you on behalf of TDLC and the Global Practice for Urban Resilience and Land to this wonderful seminar where we will learn a great deal. Um, just as a quick background, uh, the Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook is actually a very unique uh, initiative that we as part of TDLC have had the good fortune of being able to support, uh, to transport it and to use it in different contexts. Um, in Yokohama, the urban design sketchbook has been used very effectively to engage citizens, to engage residents in order to do much more effective urban planning. Because as we know, the people who actually live there are the people who know best what works and what doesn't. And this is a unique way, it, the sketchbook is a unique way of bringing in the voices of residents, their expertise into a sketchbook. But does it work only in Yokohama? Or can we actually use it in different contexts? Well, actually, we find that we can use it in different contexts, and we have had the we've had the great great opportunity of testing it in Panama City and in Barranquilla, in Colombia. So, even there, we find that there has been a great uptake. But not only has there been a great uptake, there has also been a way in which it has been adapted to that context, to that idiom, which is which is actually the hallmark of a great initiative is that it, it has a universal appeal and it has an ability to be adapted to different contexts. From TDLC, we are very proud to have had a technical deep dive in 2017 on urban regeneration. And Yokohama is one of the cities that we have a unique and special relationship with. And the two came together. And the two came together, but did not stop at that one technical deep dive. What ended up happening was that there was an operationalization of some of the ideas and con concepts that emerged through the Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook. You will hear more about that, so I don't want to stand between you and the, and the speakers. We have, a, we have a very exciting program ahead of us. Um, let me stop here again, welcome you, and wish all the best um, in this learning process. Please share your thoughts on social media, on the chat function here, and let us know what you think. Thank you, and back to you, Michiko. Thank you so much, Maitre. Up next, I would like to move on to our first main section of the webinar, which is the presentation on Yokohama Design Sketchbook and its application. 
I would like to invite Haruka Miki Imoto, who is our operations officer at TDLC to moderate this section. Haruka, the stage is yours. Thank you, Michiko. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I will be your moderator for the following sessions. We will first have a quick presentation on Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook Philosophy and Method uh, from Mr. Tsuneo Noda. I would like to introduce Mr. Tsuneo Noda. Uh, he is an architect. He is representative director of N150 Inc. He is also a former urban design specialist at City of Yokohama, as Hotta-san has just described. So Tsuneo, the stage is yours. Good afternoon, this is Nona. Very nice to meet you all. As I was introduced, I'm currently working as a freelancer and a representative of the End 150 Inc., uh, leveraging all the experience at uh, the Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook. I have been very active for 2014, for about five years. Yokohama uh, recruited uh, the uh, specialist of the urban uh, designing and for two years I was the second uh, person who was uh, recruited as the specialist and then I had experienced uh, the Yokohama urban design uh, sketchbook and we developed this tool in the process. For 15 next 15 uh, minutes Briefly, I would like to explain about this tool and content and also how we apply this tool at home and abroad so that uh, I could introduce uh, this concept uh, which leads to the panel discussion. I'll be speaking uh, in Japanese, so I apologize uh, that we, had to, we have to listen to the translation. I would like to speak as slowly as possible. So Yokohama Urban uh, Design a Sketchbook. So this tool, where did it come from and how it was developed and how it could be used? Those are the points that I would like to cover in this presentation. So these are the key points for the entire presentation, as I have explained many times. This is not a mere workshop tool. As Yokohama formulated urban design vision, this tool was created. So uh, it, this tool was based upon uh, the initiatives taken by the Yokohama in relation to the urban design vision. I would like to emphasize on that. Also, at times, the municipality uh, lead the urban designing and planning. But at the end of the day, the residents are the actors uh, who needs uh, to engage in the process of designing. That, I believe, is an ideal state. Therefore, I also like to emphasize that point. And with regard to the sketch itself, rather than just drawing something on the paper, there are three steps that we need to go through, and each step has its own meaning. So please uh, keep that in mind as well. So where this uh, Yokohama urban design sketch book came from? So Yokohama design uh, vision, as was mentioned uh, by Mr. Hota in 1971, when person was assigned to be in charge of urban design, uh, this uh, was uh, developed and was released officially in 2015 for the first time. Various contents are included uh, in this vision, but basically, as I said earlier, how urban design activities uh, can uh, become the part of the daily life of the citizens and become very familiar uh, to the citizens. And so, and also how we can create the day-to-day -day scenery of the city attractive. Those are the topics that we focused upon. On the right-hand side, you can see the illustration uh, showing the individual's uh, lives and the value of the city. 
creating the virtual cycle of enhancement of the value. So that is the philosophy we have. So we call this a vision. However, if you think about the normal future vision of the city, uh, it, this Yokohama vision uh, is slightly different. So in the publication, you don't really see the specific future uh, vision of uh, Yokohama, but actually you can see the essential point of the 50 years of efforts in Yokohama. And, and it is also described the how ideal urban design can be developed. And also the future way forward uh, is described uh, in this urban um, vision. And this sketchbook that I mentioned it's not about showing the concrete perspective top down, rather this is something uh, that is the outcome of the engagement of the citizens. So this page shows uh, the uh, cross-sectional uh, sketches of the Yokohama city. Uh, this is uh, the, really the a large framework, uh, overarching framework we have. So on a cross-sectional manner, you can look at the different parts of the city and to facilitate the understanding by showing the two-dimensional uh, picture. And there are seven uh, zones uh, available, and uh, you can see the scenery depicted. The pictures you are seeing are the sketches which are already being completed. But before this version created, uh, you can see the sort of terrains and the major uh, buildings only uh, uh, drawn on uh, the paper, which is called the basic sketch. And the papers were carefully selected so that a drawing becomes quite uh, simple and 3.7 people are living uh, in the Yokohama city and our philosophy is that uh, each of 3.7 citizens has the individual lives that they lead so that philosophy is reflected in this sketches so how sketch was developed this is the topic i would like to talk about so Mr. Hotta already talked about this, but in Yokohama, 50, uh, 51st anniversary of Yokohama City has been celebrated in uh, Yokohama. There is a good vision underway. This is also included uh, in uh, the publication of the World Bank this time. But uh, there are different phases that uh, Yokohama Urban Design went through. The phase one uh, is uh, during the time uh, that there was economic uh, develop was taking place. And during that time, uh, the philosophy idea of urban design was uh, imported uh, to Yokohama so that uh, quality can be enhanced through the municipality's efforts. And after that, we started engaging other companies, local companies, and so forth. That is the phase two, citizen collaboration through stronger communication. And the phase three is making urban design a part of everyday life. So phase three is about each individual citizen's lives. The phase three cannot be achieved overnight, but it's going to take 30, 40, and 50 uh, years. So we will continue uh, to make urban design a part of every life. On the right-hand side of this slide, you can see seven aims of urban design. Uh, this was uh, created uh, during the period of phase one by Design Bureau. These seven aims still are uh, valid, but in addition uh, to that, we have uh, a quality and value related uh, items to show that the design is not only for the specialist, but rather design uh, is the process that should have the engagement of the non-specialist to enrich the entire design. So 
through the Urban Design Bureau, a lot of efforts being made, but now uh, we have entered into the phase of engaging all the citizens. So that is the basis of the design sketch. In the interest of time, I can't really go into all the details. So please visit uh, Yokohama City's website uh, so that you could find uh, the brochures in English to show the history of the urban design Yokohama. Also, you can find some information about the exhibition of urban design Yokohama. And along with the urban design exhibition, you can actually purchase uh, the uh, booklet, a visual booklet explaining about the urban design in Yokohama. It's also, uh, already, although it is only in uh, English. Also, the World Bank has uh, put compiled the information uh, about the 50 years of uh, efforts made in Yokohama in this field. So you can have access to such information as well. So how this workshop uh, should be utilized and how it works. So as I have been explaining, there are three steps uh, that you have to go through uh, in a sketch, uh, conducting sketch. First is the base sketch. So in the lower picture shows the complete version of the sketch, project sketch. But before that, we have a very simple base sketch. Of course, uh, you can't really start with the blank sh sheet, but the base sketch shows the uh, status uh, quo, uh, only uh, showing the symbolic buildings and some environmental traits. Uh, it is a very sort of balanced uh, the sketch uh, to give the room to exercise the imagination. So um, in the process of drawing those uh, base uh, sketch, we talk to um, architecture students and some experts who are at hand available in the local area to incorporate topography, buildings and environment and people's activities. Um, we surveyed all of these elements in drawing those sketches and uh, um, citizens that take place in the stage of idea sketch portion and the yellow portion. As I will introduce to you children as well as the elderly people, uh, they can just uh, draw whatever they want in texts as well as in drawings on top of this uh, base sketch. So it's not as if uh, those who have uh, big voices can take part in the workshop, but children who may not uh, speak very well but, um, those uh, can also take part alongside with other participants. So it's not as if uh, we need to complete those sketches at this stage. When it comes to project sketch, at the end of the workshop, if there is an opportunity for presentation, uh, we come up with um, a theme to pick up uh, certain things which need to be dig deeper and put them together. Uh, for the future action. So that is the uh, stage of project sketch. So with this methodology in Hanyu city of Saitama prefecture, and, uh, and this is something I got commissioned by the city of Saitama. As you can see, um, there are a lot of uh, shops on the street that are closed already. This is typical of uh, suburban areas of Japan, but there are people who love this city and there are quite a number of young people. We held a workshop, as you can see, a lot of people took part. As you can see, children as well as the elderly people came together to come up with ideas. And at the end, there were certain group presentations done by the participating children. On the left-hand side, we have a base sketch. On the right-hand side, we have a lot of a detailed descriptions uh, from a small area to a big area being drawn on top of it. So this was done in Panama and uh, Balantija. 
And we will uh, take a look at the uh, video on the practice in uh, Baran Kuija. So I would like to focus my presentation on the city of Panama. In Panama, as you can see on the left uh, bottom side, we had a bus tour uh, as the site visit. And then on top of that, ice break exercise, the second from the left. Uh, so rather than going directly into the sketching workshop, uh, this is a kind of an ice break, uh, getting to know each other session proposed by a facilitator. So we had a kind of a separate workshop for ice breaking. And then on top of that, uh, those uh, people came to give us lectures about the history of the area and others. We worked with the uh, uh, local students as facilitators to have the workshop organized. And towards the end, in front of the um, deputy mayor, uh, there were presentations. So this was a two day workshop and these are the outcome. So this was supported by students. Uh, some of them were supported by students, so they were quite uh, uh, neat. Others um, just uh, drawn by lay persons. But uh, you can feel the passion of the people who drew uh, those ideas on the sketch. And the same thing took place in Barranquilla. We had a site visit, a lecture discussion, workshop, and a presentation. And uh, at the end, in front of Ricardo, we had presentations and Ricardo made comments. And this is just an example as one of the uh, um, outcome of the Barantija workshop. So in Panama and Barantija, uh, it was a two days workshop, but then uh, this can be actually expanded in different uh, manner. Um, it could be just for one day or two days, or sometimes it could be over several days uh, to have a local practice. And also in order to foster um, local human resources, we can work together with students or work with research institutes locally. And then this kind of a workshop uh, can be delivered on separate occasions over a long uh, time. And the first the municipalities are in the lead and towards the end, uh, more towards the citizens' leadership. So uh, this kind of workshop can be tailored and also applied in a different manner, depending on the context. So if you think about having such a workshop in the future, please uh, think about um, making it uh, tailored for your context. Thank you very much. So oh, that was a very, uh, it's, it was impressive because I know it's very hard to package all the messages of this, uh, this, of this report in such a short period of time. So thank you so much. Uh, I took notes that this is not just a method, right? Uh, the guidebook does have the method, but I think as, as authors, we did have a quite a substantial time to really rediscover what the philosophy of the urban design uh, in Yokohama. And it's true that so many people have already participated and joined the, the event that's happening in, in, in Yokohama, the exhibition. So uh, this is just a way to also see how we can adapt package and then adapt in different cities. But it's really important to really convey the message that this is about philosophy, vision, uh, more than the method. And as long as this philosophy is conveyed, uh, it's just a matter of like how to adapt using this guidebook. So thank you so much. I really like a lot of words you said, but I think we can take those uh, for the panel discussion. Thank you so much. Um, so Tsuneo, uh, that was very crisp. I would like to actually uh, invite back Michiko for the next session. Thank you so much, tsuneo san Thank you, Haruka. And thank you, noda san very much for a very comprehensive presentation. Now we would like to show you the short video footage uh, showing some scenes from the workshop in Barranquilla, Colombia, for you to get the sense of how this was actually conducted. Uh, University of Norte in Barranquilla has played a vital role in preparing this workshop and the video is also produced by them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Se le da la participación y en parte también en sí la voz a cada uno de los miembros de las comunidades del barrio 
Entonces cada uno eh, se presenta y muestra qué quiere para la comunidad y es también, como te digo, la voz que es fundamental en cada uno de los proyectos, ya que en la zona donde se van a trabajar, también siempre que hay una obra o algún elemento nuevo, se ven implícitos distintos factores que influyen, uno de estos inconvenientes o que no están de acuerdo con ciertas cosas. Entonces yo considero que este programa o este espacio que nos han dado es fundamental. Eh, este taller ha sido una oportunidad para conocer aspectos diferentes de la ciudad de Barranquilla. Esta intervención nos permite adentrarnos en la posibilidad de vivir la ciudad más allá de ciudadanos, sino como arquitectos, reflexionar acerca de cuáles son las problemáticas que se están presentando, identificarlas, poder plantear posibles soluciones. Through the sketch, it's possible to engage wider citizens. Because if it's something uh, documented, uh, it would all only attract some adults. Um, by visualizing, uh, it can also have participation from younger citizens like children and even older citizens like uh, grandma and grandpa. Y es muy bueno y muy bonito realmente ver qué sueñan los jóvenes, qué sueñan los arquitectos y qué sueñan todas estas personas que vienen alrededor de Río sobre cuál debe ser el futuro. Una ciudad muy verde también, una ciudad donde se da mucha interacción entre personas. Me pareció muy interesante la preponderancia que tienen los nuevos proyectos y la conectividad también. No solamente entre vial, sino también entre personas, para que lugares que fluyan las ideas. Entonces nosotros como alcaldía esperamos acoger estos estos sueños de los ciudadanos para poder plasmar nuestro plan de desarrollo y también la visión de ciudad que tengamos a largo plazo. This output of this workshop will be a kind of starting point for future. So after this workshop, maybe some participants can, um, can start to act something, or also um, city government can uh, accept some idea for kind of master policy. Thank you. So uh, now I would like to move on to invite Mr. Hideyuki Nakatsu. Mr. Nakatsu is an associate professor at the College of Architecture and Environmental Design from Kanto Gakuin University. He took part in the Yokohama Design Sketchbook Workshop in Panama City. Uh, unfortunately, he could not join this webinar today in person, but he has kindly video recorded his message about what the workshop means for the citizen engagement. So please play the video. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Nakatsu from Kanto Gakuin University. I specialize in landscape design and urban development, and I'm doing research on children's playgrounds. First of all, congratulations on the publication of the World Bank's Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook. 
This is a record of the results of discussions on urban design workshop methods, which was led by the Urban Design Bureau of Yokohama City in cooperation with some university faculty members, including myself, and the results of actually putting them into practice in two overseas locations. I think other people have already explained the contents of this booklet, so I would like to talk today about the various discussions we had when we thought about workshop methods, and especially I'd like to talk about conceptual aspect rather than methodological aspects of workshops. Now, let me share the screen. No, let me get started. First of all, this is about the purpose of a workshop. Um, this varies from person to person. And what is often said is that the purpose of workshop being consensus building. And naturally, consensus building is very important. But we have been arguing that consensus building is only a means to an end, and that the goal is actually relationship building. There are many different kinds of relationship building, and we have often discussed the three in-betweens in the urban planning, time, space, and fellowship. In terms of time, there is the past, present, and future. And it is important to think about and find out about the various historical legacies. Then, after understanding current social issues, the natural environment, and, all, and so on, we can think about what the future should look like. In this way, time is always connected and continuous. So it is important to make local people aware of how to understand and advance the time. In terms of space, we often refer to it as SNL, and we think about how to create relationships not only within the site, but also in the surrounding area and the wider area. And the most important thing is to think about the town in a way that transcends generations, involving everyone from small children and babies to the elderly. And we also need to think about how to build relationships with residents, government, and business people, and university students. And also, how to connect the different values of many different ethnic groups. This is especially important in other multi-ethnic countries. We believe that there are very important points in building relationships. Workshops are often conducted by the residents and the government or the municipality. And especially in the first steps, the residents become aware of the good quality of the area and make new discoveries, which in turn gives them a sense of pride in the area and confidence to think about the future of the town. And the administrative or municipality side is more of a support role for the residents. But in the beginning, the municipality is often the main actor and does a lot of preparation. But as the workshops go on, it becomes an equal with the residents. And eventually, the residents will take various actions on their own initiatives, and the municipality will support them from behind the scenes. I think this kind of relationship is very important. When holding several workshops, it is particularly important to publicize the workshops and involve as many people as possible during the workshops. I mentioned earlier that building relationships is important, and by holding these workshops, the community can develop itself into a very resilient community. We, we have been discussing the concept that it is not a matter of the municipality encouraging the residents to do something, but of the residents thinking for themselves, discussing the future and connecting these two activities, which we believe is a very important conceptual key point in the workshops. Finally, 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank the World Bank from the bottom of my heart for creating this opportunity. I will now leave my comments with the hope that today's discussion will lead to creative future development of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nakatsu Sensei, for great insight. Now we will be changing gears and move on to the international panel discussion on how to apply Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook in Latin America and Caribbean and beyond. At this time, I would like to invite Haruka again to moderate this discussion. Haruka, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Michiko, and hi again, everyone. Uh, Professor Nakaz's video really, uh, you know, highlighted how the value of workshop can be, can be, you know, can be, can be, how the workshop can help uh, to enhance the community engagement, uh, not only consensus building, but also, you know, start the, the communication basically and explore the city together. Uh, so that was very good uh, uh, basis for our panel discussion. And today we have a wonderful uh, panelists, uh, both from Japan, but across the Pacific. So let me introduce each panelist uh, before going to the discussions. Um, we have a mixture of present and former city practitioners, academia and World Bank uh, colleagues. And all of us have worked to make waterfront cities more livable and attractive in one way or another. Um, Balanquija and Panama and Yokohama, all cities are waterfront cities with aspiration in urban design and unique opportunity and challenges. So let me introduce the panelists today. Um, so I'm gonna call uh, the names starting from those who might be you know, coming or joining virtually uh, from the farthest from Tokyo or Yokohama. So uh, Mr. Ricardo Vives, or Vives, sorry, uh, he's a president, Querita de Oro, uh, which is a development corporation for Balanquilla, Colombia. Uh, good evening, Ricardo. Good evening, uh, Miki. This is uh, very nice to, to say hello and uh, good uh, morning to everybody there over there in Japan. Great, fantastic. Uh, up next, uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Manuel Trut. Uh, Secretary General at School of Architecture, Design of Latin America and Caribbean. He is also a former Panama City official who played an instrumental role in when we apply this uh, methodology in Panama City. So good afternoon or good evening rather, Manuel. Good evening, greetings from Panama City and thank you for having me here. It will be a pleasure to share our experience with all the panelists and assistants to this presentation. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, up next, uh, we have a uh, Professor Yo Sasaki. Uh, he, she is teaching at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Waseda University. Uh, as you saw in the photo, she has been instrumental in delivery of both uh, Panama City and Valenquilla. She also works uh, very uh, comprehensively with the Yokohama City. So welcome Professor Sasaki. We always, with a lot of respect, I call her Professor Yo. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'd like to uh, have a nice discussion from now on. But uh, I and another son were requested to speak in uh, Japanese for the convenience for the Japanese audience. So later, I will speak in Japanese. Thank you. Uh, it's very nice of uh, Professor Yo because she accepted this request. I know that gives a list of some feel feeling of inclusion. So thank you for doing it. Uh, up next, we have uh, Mr. Tsuneo Noda. I think you've met him already. So uh, uh, again, he's the architect, a former urban design specialist at the city of Yokohama. Uh, welcome Tsuneo. And finally, we have, uh, 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 we have uh, Harris uh, Sanofuya. Uh, he is a senior disaster risk manage management specialist at World Bank. Uh, Harris is one of the key person uh, of you know, trying to apply uh, this method and philosophy uh, to Panama City. Uh, he's now based in Jakarta, as you know, World Bank staff uh, travel around. So welcome Harris and good morning to you for joining from Jakarta. Good morning Haruka, uh, very excited to be part of this panel and saludo especial a los represent participantes de Latinoamérica. Thank you. Thank you. So um, 
I would like to, I actually prepared a few questions so we can kind of frame this discussion. Uh, I would like to perhaps uh, uh, start with some questions on why workshops, right? I mean, there are a gazillion ways to engage citizens and, and, and open up the urban design to people. And so we would like to unpack a little bit why workshop and how it works, right? Um, we would like to invite three of uh, prof 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 professionals uh, based in Latin America and the Caribbean. So I'm gonna uh, have this question first to Harris. Um, before you moved to Jakarta, uh, you spent many years as World Bank uh, Senior Specialist to make the city more livable, uh, inclusive, and thriving. Uh, given the example of Panama City, uh, can you elaborate what World Bank does in Panama City to make the city more livable? Uh, thank you for the question, Haruka. First of all, I would like to, uh, again, uh, thank you for inviting me to participate in this commemoration for a long-awaited uh, publication of the guidebook, and I'm looking forward to receiving my copy very soon, Haruka. Uh, regarding your question, uh, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, while I was working for the World Bank in Central America, I'm based in Panama City, I had the opportunity to engage with the local administration at this special moment where the municipality of Panama was developing the very first uh, master plan for, for the city. And actually, Manuel Trute, one of our panelists, was our, our focal point uh, for this uh, technical assistance. And as many, many other Latin American cities, Panama grew uh, turning its back to the sea and its rivers in the context of a rapid and unplanned urbanization uh, and also a uh, fast economic growth. Some similar uh, features that we have seen also in the evolution of Yokohama that was mentioned before. And just to illustrate the point, the Panama City concentrates more than 30% of the total population of the country and, and also uh, concentrates almost 40% of the economic assets in, in the city, in metropolitan Panama City. And one of the uh, most conspicuous manifestations of this unplanned urban growth is the limited access to the waterfront and riverfronts. In addition, and that's something that is uh, particularly important for me, that was uh, some of the city has seen an increase in urban floods associated to these highly urbanized river basins and compounded by a deficient solid waste management. So through, through a technical assistance, the Panama City, called the Panama City Waterfront Redevelopment and Resilience Program, our team from the World Bank supporting the municipality to develop a comprehensive urban resilience program, aiming at restoring the citizens' uh, relationship with the sea through the recovery of waterfront uh, spaces and promotion of a more sustainable and inclusive ur urban layout. And by the way, it was in this context that the officials from, from the Panama, the, from the municipality, participated in technical deep dives from the organized by the PBLC on issues related to resilience urban planning. And as an outcome of their participation, the city requested support on urban design guidelines and participatory planning processes for water from development. That's how uh, we ended up having this uh, workshop in Panama and applying the Yokohama urban design schedule. I, I will stop there. Thank you so much. So uh, you really give a very good image and also very vivid image since we are, happy, we are doing this, uh, this webinar on, 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 virtual, on virtual setup. Um, so it was not only the sustainability and water from regeneration per se, but there's all, also this ongoing resilience uh, challenges that the city is, is facing. So it's not only you know making it prettier, but it's more like fundamental in a way in terms of the opportunity and challenge. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to continue maybe depicting a little bit of the, these two cities. So can I invite Manuel and then Ricardo? Manuel, now uh, you have served as the former head of the Urban Planning uh, Bureau for Panama City. Can you walk through uh, how urban planning is typically done in Panama City? Because um, you know, uh, my original question for this first leg of the session is, you know, how workshop is effective, right? So we wanted to see what is the participatory approach uh, in Panama before having this uh, Yokohama design sketchbook, and how you know the participatory approach has been leveraged uh, for urban design in your city. Over to you. Sure. Thank you very much, Haruka. And yeah, um, I think Harris uh, made a very clear profile of what was going on in terms of urban planning and different situations in Panama City. And uh, it was the first time 
uh, in, the, in a process of decentralization. This whole thing caught us uh, in a process of decentralization in Panama in general, nationwide. So Panama City being the, the larger city and the most complex uh, without a comprehensive spatial plan, it was a candidate for discussing what kind of city we wanted to have in the near future. So we started um, opening up different channels of communication. The first thing we had to do was trying to communicate with different stakeholders, including, especially including uh, communities to let them speak out what kind of city they were expecting. So it was kind of a catharsis because after so many time, uh, a, a, a very wide span of time without communities speaking out their uh, um, opinions of what Panama should be doing for improve their quality of life. Uh, it was a very difficult uh, process in general. So the first thing that we proposed to ourselves was to opening those channels of communications. In the meantime, we had a couple of uh, local officials uh, participating from the technical deep dives in Tokyo Development Learning Center. Uh, we started engaging with these uh, opportunities and bringing back some new ideas and uh, opportunities to be applied in Panama, especially those related to solid waste management within uh, river easements and uh, also informal occupation of, of river easements. Uh, causing the uh, probably flood risk exposure, more uh, flood risk exposure uh, in urban watersheds. So by the time that we uh, knew about the youth methodology, it came just like from heaven uh, as a methodology of engaging uh, community uh, participation academic participation, and we tried some uh, invitations for the private sector. Unfortunately, they didn't appear. It's a very difficult um, to invite them and to for them to show up and uh, be in the same table, in the same table with the different stakeholders. So this is part of the process. But in general, uh, I think the YOTS methodology helped us uh, in a different way because we already had the the usual methodology, but this new methodology of working with a cross section of this part of the city, the uh, Rio Abajo uh, watershed, and uh, beginning to characterize the different urban situations culturally uh, and from natural and built environments. So it was very important to put faces to this almost empty paper with a cross-section and bringing it to life. I would like to, to leave it that, uh, to this level. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, since you have been so eloquent, I would like to stop uh, moderating and just continue chatting on the, what you just said. But um, I guess we can, we can continue and come back to your point. Uh, I think you've mentioned already a very important point. It's not only opening up the channel to communicate, but also go you know, beyond the silo within the city government as well. Uh, I did see a uh, witness in the Panama City. Uh, there was uh, also the solid waste management you know, head director who has, who has been very involved. I wish that she was here, so she'd be also delighted. So it's true that this is uh, this method is really you know, uh, cross-sectoral and silo breaking in, in many different functionalities. Uh, so thank you so much for touching on that very important point. Uh, Ricardo, hi. I'm sorry for the wait. Uh, floor is yours. Uh, can you perhaps uh, describe about Balanquilla? Uh, I've been there. Not too many people have been there. You need to explain how fabulous the city is, how colorful it is, what you know, festival you had just done, and then maybe also touch a little bit on participatory approach and how it's been, you know, happening in the city. It's a very difficult question, but I'm sure you can do so. Over to you. Thank you. <laughs> sure, Haruka. Uh, I'll do my best. Um, well, so basically, uh, for context for the rest of the audience, um, Barranquilla is uh, a 2.5 million city in the metropolitan area, inhabitants in the city. Uh, it's actually the fourth city in Colombia, which uh, it's a pretty large number for, uh, for us, considered a medium-sized city. But in Latin America, we have uh, 
very large uh, metropolis uh, in terms of population. Uh, having said this, uh, Barranquilla, uh, the story of Barranquilla is actually a, a Cinderella story in terms of uh, Barranquilla being the number two city in Colombia uh, in the beginning of the last century. But then uh, little by little losing its, uh, its glamour, its uh, dazzle, and becoming a, a, a problematic city and troubled city, uh, disordered city. Um, but then at the turn of the century and the early 2000s, Barranquilla started rethinking itself. Um, and in a, in a Colombian culture, the last uh, 50 years where there's a lot of planning uh, culture, a lot of regulation, a lot of master planning, um, Barranquilla had fallen behind in the midst of all this uh, chaos and disorder and uh, basically problems. So um, Barranquilla is a, is a fairly large city, but still a very manageable city in the Latin American context. Um, and it's a city that it's re-seeking its, uh, its uh, dazzle again, as I mentioned, um, in becoming this very important bustling city. We are a very uh, joyous city. Uh, we have a carnival. Um, and then it's, it's just a city of immigrants. So we're a very open society, a very um, multi-ethnic society. Um, and basically the, the, the relevance of Barranquilla came from its riverfront. Uh, but as it happened in many cases in, 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 Western, uh, in Western hemisphere, but also all around the world, uh, little by little, um, technology, containerization, uh, indus industrial uh, regulation, started making the riverfront less relevant for industry and more relevant for other uses. And that, uh, in that sense, Barranquilla basically lagged and fell behind and its riverfront was as pretty much as uh, Manuel Harris and in the Yokohama case have mentioned, inaccessible, not for the citizens and untreated. So it was actually a potential risk for, for, for a lot of uh, communities in the, in the city. So Barranquilla, in its, uh, in its uh, planning, decided to do this massive project called the Gran Malecón, which is a, a riverside park, a boardwalk, if you may, uh, that acts as a flood protection barrier, but also as, a, as the most important park in the city. And it's actually the most visited spot in Colombia with over 20 million visitors. Um, but this Malecón just opened up 650 hectares of land uh, that people needed to reclaim. Um, so even if we have a very rich tradition of citizen participation in Colombia, because we do, uh, we have uh, examples like um, uh, we, we, we redesigned all and rebuilt all the parks in Barranquilla and it was a community led experience where people would do these forums, uh, uh, sometimes to the late nights and uh, late hours of night. And people would decide if they, if, if they wanted to have a basketball court or a soccer court or a playground or a flower garden. And it's just a very, very beautiful exercise where people decided what they wanted to do with the park, where we had the, a, a very comprehensive paving program for the city where people actually participated, chipping in money for some of the materials to get the roads of their neighborhoods paved. But then, and this is a very funny story, uh, not funny, but a very uh, beautiful story. They, they, uh, they would name officers, community officers that would be vigilant that the government was doing their job. And in many cases, uh, kids, children would be elected as the, as the, as the officials or the community officials. And they would uh, decide what color they wanted the curbs. And they would paint uh, in this beautiful, uh, colorful things, uh, the new roads in their neighborhoods. But... Uh, having said all of this, and even if we do have a rich tradition of participation, the riverfront and reclaiming the grandeur of the riverfront for Barranquilla was a very difficult task. And this is where Barranquilla started thinking, um, how are we going to engage into having a citywide collective vision for what this riverfront needs to be? Uh, we had never done anything like this before. And this is where um, we started uh, getting interested and, and, and started looking into uh, alternative uh, participatory design uh, um, tools. And, uh, and this is where Yokohama Urban Design Sketchbook com comes in. Thank you, Ricardo. That was amazing. You did it. Actually, you asked you answered three questions at once. So thank you so much. I think you touched on what uh, Professor Nakatsu framed as SML, small, medium, large space, right? And when I heard that, that sounded like a McDonald's, but it, it's not. It's about the space, right? 
So for, for, for your city, uh, you are trying to do this more massive in Japanese term, like what's called urban development. But when you do it, you have noticed the importance of having like a longer time span uh, vision. And that's what you, well, that's what you thought uh, Yokohama design sketchbook might be a one way to kind of strengthen that, uh, that aspiration. Uh, thank you so much. I, I think that would that you know three of you you did fantastic. You kind of giving a vivid 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 um yeah image of what the Panama City and Valencia look like. I'm sure people are now ready to pack their pa their bag to to come to 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 enjoy it and, and experience it. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, about uh, thirty more minutes or more or less uh, to uh, to continue discussion. The reason why we have professors from Japan uh, in this workshop is because uh, on one side it's a method in workshop which is very effective, uh, but they, it's it has it's 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 effectively using uh, you know the power and also the philosophy and also speciality of landscape architects and and, and, and designers. So I'd like to now introduce and invite our professor Yo. Um, to give us a little bit of drawing sketches and preparation, that would probably be one of the key, a hidden key uh, for the success of this, uh, this workshop, right? So uh, Professor Yo, um, we've heard uh, a lot from Harris and Manuel Ricardo, and you have actually visited both Panama City and Valakija along with, uh, with, with Sunel. Um, Sunil also showed a few photos of the space sketch and, and, and so on, but could you perhaps give us a tips on when drawing sketches and what would be critical uh, for, for maybe for uh, urban practitioners? Today we have uh, dozens of practitioners joining from Latin America and Caribbean, so that tip would be helpful uh, and also for citizens. So uh, Professor Yo, over to you. Hi, Thank you very much for that question. The, uh, Panama City and Barranquilla. Uh, at both cities, I was able to have experience of uh, conducting workshops, and that experiences were very precious uh, beyond words. So, urban design a sketchbook, this methodology was applied for the first time outside Japan. So, that was quite memorable. And also, those two cities are quite different uh, in their characteristics. And we were able to apply this methodology to two different cities. And in order to complete the uh, process of ongoing learning and understanding, I think this experience was very, very helpful. This sketchbook methodology, in what sense is it so important? I may be repeating the same thing as previous speakers, but the main point, I think there are two sides, two main sides I would like to touch upon. First is that it is open to everyone. So this is a participatory process. This is one of the important characteristics. Tool to engage a citizen. Actually, there are many, many tools uh, intend uh, to have a citizen's engagement. But specifically, this methodology uh, is about vision, the city, and not only the general vision, but if you look into the mind of the each citizen, they each have this sort of vague image of the vision of the city. Through drawing the sketches and graphics, they inspire each other and come up with new ideas, or they crystallize their vision. And then as a final output, uh, they can come up with something very visual to everyone. So as a tool to have a citizen engagement that way, I think this particular methodology has a large advantage. So you maybe uh, you can have a tool with uh, a prepared scenarios based on which everyone had to work upon. But, but rather in this way, uh, everyone has opportunity to draw their ideas. For example, uh, someone would draw, uh, draw a dragonfly 
flying in the air, and that picture of the insect may give some hint to others as to what kind of vision that particular person has for the city. And that way, you can include everyone. And this is a methodology that truly support uh, the engagement of the citizens, the participation of the citizens. And in this, uh, in this sense, I think this cross-sectional sketches are very, very useful. And I found that in both cities. So uh, what happens uh, in this process is a quite uh, interaction amongst the different citizens based on their vague image of the city. And they draw all the landmarks and existing rivers and existing uh, parks, which may not be used very well. And on the cross-sectional image with some uh, symbolic buildings and existing infrastructure, people um, sort of provide additional inputs. And this uh, is another characteristics of this process. So they have abstract image of the future vision of the Panama City or Barranquilla, but they would translate that into a very tangible uh, visual, pic visual picture to show exactly what kind of changes that they would like to see in certain parts of the city. And because it's a cross-sectional sketches, you can write um, things in the air, uh, things uh, in uh, the underground. For example, it rains from the sky and it goes uh, uh, it goes into the ground and it becomes the groundwater. So you can actually draw the circulation of the water, which nurture the new sort of um, other organisms, or that circulation may cause some pollution to circulate as well. This cross-sectional image would allow you to draw that. If it's only two-dimensional, uh, sort of a flat image, uh, it will not be possible. Even if you try to use the photographs, that will not be possible. So that is the very important characteristics of the usage of these uh, cross-sectional sketches. So there is a case study of applying that at the watershed of Panama City. And also at the Barranquilla, uh, they have a huge uh, the river a basin uh, where they try to apply this methodology. Uh, through these experiences, I was able to identify the strengths or the advantage of this methodology. Uh, I, I always respecting her comment and also very looking forward to have her comment because she definitely gives this more broad view point of view, but with a lot of details. And the Japanese word she uses is so like a melody. So thank you so much for doing it as well today. Um, now, I would like to actually move a little bit and switch a gear on conducting workshop, right? Because now we heard about how to sketch, what is effectiveness of sketch and also workshop, and it has how it's been effective in two cities. Uh, we want to see unscripted, like a lot of like, a, a, you know, deepening the emotion side. So uh, one thing uh, very powerful of the, the, the sketch methodology was the fact that it was very intuitive and inclusive, as a lot of you have mentioned and easily engaging people. I like to see, you know, maybe invite all of you just for like 30 second pitch. You know, what did you like the most about the workshop or maybe site visit? You know, uh, I, I know we are getting a lot of questions on chat bar and maybe we can also surface because, you know, we did have some um, very diverse group of citizens. Uh, you know, the school children going back to home from school, they decided to join. They were not subscribed, but they did in Balanquilla, for instance. And I'm sure Panama had, uh, you know, so the power of youth. Uh, we also had uh, inclusion of the local uh, leaders, uh, right, in some of the districts. So maybe can I invite uh, in like uh, Manuel, Ricardo, Professor Yotes, Neil Harris, uh, you know, what was the emotion? What was the most surprising thing uh, about the workshop? Uh, over to you. So maybe starting with Harris and, and Ricardo Manuel, and then your sensei and Tunel. Thank you, Haruka. And just listening to the panelists is like I'm reviving the experience of being in the workshop. So it's super interesting. And uh, for me, I think I will, um, we have to think in the Panama, in the context that it was mentioned by Manuel, 
completely different to Colombia in terms of the, the culture of uh, citizen participation. So for me, of course, the fact uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, to see the, the people interacting, to see the residents interacting in the workshop, it's truly a co-creation experience. So I really, it's not just a buzzword, it's really a co-creation experience. So I, I think that was a, one of the highlights for me. And I, I will also mention what the Professor uh, Nakatsu mentioned, the, 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 the workshop being a, a building relationship experience. So, and, and I, I mentioned this because uh, I think uh, the workshop allowed all the participants to recognize themselves as part of the same, pro the same context, the same project, the Rio Abajo Basin. And that is super difficult in Panama. They, they, they didn't think they belong to the same uh, urban water basin. And how and the river was uh, hidden, but the river was there, and it, was, it has very important implication for the dynamic between the upper basin. The, uh, so uh, for me, that that was the highlight, uh, and the, the, just the, the, the added value of the workshop itself in terms of uh, triggering the the, the co-creation of, of, of this vision, and um, and I will say also that the, the interaction between the the students, the municipal, municipal officials and the, 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 the research institution. Uh, yeah, the private sector was a missing one, but that's a hard one, Manuel, that's gonna be always hard in, in Panama. But I think uh, that was a highlight for me, the, the, the dynamics that were created in the, in, the, in the workshop, and also the, the fact that they can identify some actions that they can do themselves. They don't need to rely on the master plan or so on. So that I think is a, is a, is a, was amazing, yeah. I will stop there. Hopefully, about 30 seconds. <laughs> yes, that was 30 seconds. Thank you, Harris. Uh, maybe I can invite Ricardo to have some balance of the two cities, Ricardo and then Manuel. Uh, sure. Um, well, what was very interesting for me uh, at the first glimpse and being invited to, to as an observer at the Panama uh, City Sketchbook uh, is that this tool, even if it's, uh, if it's, uh, you get a, you get a, um, you invite people, you're going to have a group of about, of about 50 to 60 people. That's still a reduced population if you talk about a 2 million people city. Um, but in any case, the tool for me, it's so powerful in the fact that it strips down urban planning from its technical, uh, wise people kind of thing. And it makes it a, uh, something that anybody can do. Um, and that's, uh, for me, where the secret lies is that uh, cities are for citizens and citizens are not just uh, urban planners and technical people. Citizens are everybody. And, and in this case, um, the fact of changing urban planning from a floor plan point of view, or even a bird's eye point of view, to a section point of view, which is actually how children start drawing, it not, op it not only opens up a window of involving children, but actually people that never got into maps or geography or planning. So it's just uh, children and even uh, as, as, as a lot of uh, guests have mentioned, el elderly people. So it's a really, even if it's, uh, it requires a lot of effort for the workshops, it's a very inclusive tool in the sense that anybody can participate. Thank you so much. And, and this, is, uh, this is actually a valid question question and point. Uh, we saw that in, 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 in at least in Valencia, but also in Panama, and I'm sure that's happening in, in Yokohama. So thank you so much. Uh, Manuel? Sure, they all got my point. So I have a few things to say. <laughs> but uh, I think elaborating in a couple of uh, aspects, uh, Ricardo and Harry said, uh, in the case of Panama, rivers are hidden are in the back side of the city. We don't share the same space. We don't notice them. We cannot read them in our day-to-day -day lives as citizens. So bringing to life and giving a personality to that river in the particular case of uh, uh, Rio Abajo and asking the river what their problems were in terms of uh, waste management, flooding risk, um, uh, informal occupation, and the, the, the same river creates a cross-section from different uh, urban situations that different communities or stakeholders didn't, didn't even imagine that 
existed or shared the same territory. And this leads me to the second uh, point that I would like to elaborate a little bit more uh, upon Ricardo's work is building a common language. Because we are technicians, we talk sophisticated, uh, but we have to approach communities or different stakeholders with maybe same perspectives, maybe different perspectives, uh, different aspirations and needs, but they don't know how to communicate or they, they know how to communicate their way. And this, is, this doesn't happen in a, in a city map. Uh, it happens with uh, visions, with images, with landmarks, uh, reading the, the culture, the local culture, what, happen, what really happens there in that piece of territory in that part of the city. So bringing up that discussion, that reflection among these different stakeholders sitting in the same table for me was amazing. Uh, it, and it, it paid the, the experience for sure. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, you're also another person with a good, like a rich language. So I, I don't think you have any issue to have the, the common language for different uh, personality, but thank you so much. Uh, uh, Professor Yo, um, you've joined the two, two city uh, workshop along with Sunil, right? Uh, what was your surprise? I'm sure, as you said, it has been so vivid and it was also serving your academic you know, research as well. Um, any surprise, any like a big lessons from your side? Hi. Well, thank you very much. As has been mentioned already by everyone, uh, in conducting those workshops, there were many discoveries. But having said that, I'd like to also touch upon the preparation stage leading up to the workshops, because I had certain discoveries there as well. This methodology, this methodology to work in a very effective manner, we need to have cross-sectional base sketch. We have to get that right. Which part of the city needs to be incorporated? What kind of a landmark should be incorporated into the base sketch? what should be excluded from the base sketch. Such choices are very important. And in the process of preparing for such base sketch in Panama or in Barranquilla, those urban designers and his history scholars and also students who know, who understand those areas, they got involved too make great efforts to prepare for such base sketch. And in the process of having interactions with those people that draft the first version of the base sketch, you know, that can be um, not good enough for the workshop, but then that can be improved or uh, that can be a sketch. It, it can evolve into a sketch that has a big potential for inviting ideas from the citizens, such potential was really great. Together with the researchers and the students, I was able to create such a sketch in this process. And that process was really impressive because the first draft of the sketch was not good enough. That is not inviting ideas. The size of, of the sketch is not quite right, but then it gets sophisticated over the time. And if you connect this and that and that, that way we'll be able to have better discussions on this area. Such discussion process was very, very important for me. Showing again, Sunel was one of the slides, right? Uh, so it was true. It was not that easy to store this, um, to have the base sketch. Uh, we had a number of back and forth with the Florida University in Panama, and then and the University of uh, Norte uh, for, for Barranquilla. And Suneo, you have been very patient and professor has been also patient, but then our counterparts of university were even more patient because they don't know how to do. So it was definitely a lot of collaboration. And I also like to highlight how the volunteer university students have been one of the key um, cheerleaders, really literally cheerleaders to make this happen. 
So um, yeah, thank you so much for highlighting that. Highlighting that. Uh, we tend to focus only on the workshop, but actually the preparation was one of the key. So that's, uh, that's good to, to get highlighted. Thank you so much. Uh, Tsuneo, can I invite you for a few comments? And I would like to actually go and wrap up in a, in a while because uh, some of the questions are coming. So I'd like to start asking those questions. Over to you, Tsuneo. Hi. Yes, thank you. So, Others have already explained many different things, so I would like to come from a broader perspective. So as Manuel has pointed out, so um, minority residents uh, who may not be in the mainstream, to what extent we can engage those people as well? I think that's uh, one of the questions that's been submitted. And of course, workshops alone cannot solve that issue. But as Professor Sasaki said, uh, which areas should be targeted? Why we target those particular areas? Because there can be some social issues of the minority people. And in the process of that, we engage uh, students, uh, we conduct a hearing with those minority people in the process of uh, preparation. Uh, you know, we can provide an opportunity for those people to be engaged uh, in the process, and that can lead to different uh, relationships. And I think that actually happened in Balanquisha. So I think a broader participation, more than expected by the organizer, uh, actually got realized in Barranquilla. That was really impressive. So technical uh, research was done to draw this uh, base sketch. But then when we come to the idea sketch for the participation, as has been uh, touched upon already, um, children could come along. And uh, uh, there are people with different uh, levels of education drawing their own ideas on the same sketch. So as you can see in this uh, booklet, you can see the visual information and you can learn from the visual information what uh, ideas uh, that uh, citizens entertained. And the outcome is different from the normal uh, workshop, which normally produce a written report. And you can see the differences uh, in uh, the uh, differences in the, the various ideas, but the various ideas can coexist on the one sheet of sketch. So depending on the age, depending on the group, you may have uh, different ideas, but all the ideas can be uh, equally uh, drawn on the sketch. And then uh, based on that, uh, you can build up uh, the information necessary for further planning. So the preparation, through to the final outcome. Uh, I think uh, there is a very productive flow. Uh, so I think the sketches must be drawn correctly or right. And so uh, the point is that I think end to end process uh, should be treated as one package. Uh, thank you, Tunel. This also answers a few several questions that are you know raising concerns on like how to ensure the inclusion of different voices you know ethnic minorities uh, uh, and then you know uh, the, the population with a lower income uh, some people have tend to have a bigger voice because they know how to channel uh, within the community engagement uh, they have the tool and also bold voice big voice to do there are some people who need to be even more hard uh, tend not to know how to, where to approach. So uh, this thing, I think it's a continued uh, question for the city when they organize, and we did face this issue uh, in other cities, right? Uh, but the one thing which is important is it's not hostile, like it's approach to, to cherish the diversity, and then we keep opening it, right? So, so that's, a, that's a good uh, lesson, thank you. Um, I'm seeing my clock and I wanna continue talking for another one hour, but looks like we have three more minutes to wrap up this uh, panel discussion, unfortunately. So uh, I would like to ask the final question and I'm gonna actually pick one question that came from the floor because this is gonna be very helpful. So now we talked about you know, how the, the, the method can be very effective uh, in, in, in planning, right? And then visioning rather. Um, I'm sure some people want to know how to implement this. 
So I know uh, maybe your city have tried different things after the workshop. If you can hear that, you know, how can we, you know, what was the impact and how can we maybe even enhance the, the impact in case uh, the, you know, the implementation is still a uh, work in progress. So with that, um, I know we, we only literally have like a 40 seconds for each, but if you can, you can again invite uh, now with uh, Ricardo, Manuel, and then Harris, uh, and then Sunel, uh, and then uh, Professor Yo, uh, maybe for the final comment, uh, that would end our panel discussion for today. So over to you, Ricardo. Thank you, Haruka. Uh, well, basically, this uh, this planning tool is, uh, has an obvious purpose of trying to to make a change in in uh, public policy. So that's that's the obvious choice. So I'm not going to go there. Um, I want to have uh, just two comments. The first is that um, to to ensure that this is going to be a successful tool, uh, you you need to have uh, an engaged local team that is willing to repeat the experience into a wider audience. Uh, in Barranquilla, we have tried. I have to say, not as successfully with uh, our Japanese uh, colleagues, but we have tried and we have done uh, several more times the workshops in our way in trying to engage a lot more people. And then the second thing that I really want to do, as I mentioned. Uh, the obvious thing is to think that this is going to be a government thing and that the government needs to do something, but there's a really powerful tool if there's a call to action in these workshops where everybody and anybody from their home, small, again, with the, with the McDonald's, small, uh, medium, large, uh, even the small tools that you can do from home, the small little changes do make an impact. So I would really, really recommend that any any further uh, scenarios where this uh, methodology is put, there's a call to action for people, not just to wait that the government does the big and large urban interventions. My turn. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, well, uh, the best scenario is for those ideas to come to life for sure. Um, and there are several ways for them to come to life uh, through uh, uh, continuity in governmental uh, engagement and um, uh, being responsible with the expectations they raise during these processes. And uh, uh, maybe in terms of an anecdote, when we were in, in office uh, working with the comprehensive spatial planning for Panama City, at the end, community said, "Okay, but you're gonna uh, you're not gonna be there anymore. Maybe another administration will come, and this is very common in Latin America. Uh, who will be in charge? Who will be pushing this car forward?" And uh, the question went back to the community: "You are in charge. You are the responsible to uh, remind the local uh, governments their promises." and um, the exchange of ideas to continue. So this repository of uh, knowledge from the communities in terms of they uh, being in power of their own decisions and being there continuously uh, throughout the different administrations and reminding the politicians why they were chosen, uh, it's very important from the base of the communities. That's my message. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, Harris, Tonel, and Professor Yo to wrap up. Uh, well, in this case, uh, Ricardo and, and Manuel took uh, away all my points, but uh, I fully, I fully agree with uh, Ricardo and, and Manuel on the local action. The call for local action is, is essential, and I think that was something that it was. Uh, a keen in the in the in the methodology in, in Panama, but of course we have the, the benefit of having a, a strong presence of, uh, of the municipality. One of the things that was crystallized and uh, uh, in terms of uh, of uh, results uh, it was the great interest from the municipality of Panama. The new a new directorate of ethnic groups uh, in the new administration after the after the the, the workshop was done. Uh, that with the workshop contribution is promoting the renovation of the Vereda Afrontiliana, or we call in English a West Indian walkway, uh, walkway in Rio Abajo. And that was a concrete example of a bridge generating between citizens and authorities informing the city urban design. So 
Uh, and even in an administration that is not so uh, fond of uh, urban planning, but uh, we have this, this, uh, this, uh, this concrete result. So uh, I think what Manuel said uh, that is a, is a way to, to, to have the citizens as guards to, to raise the issues on what can be done is, is very powerful. I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Harris. Uh, to now, uh, your last word and then you also say. Oh, we need to hear you. Sorry. Sorry, I was So how we can further utilize this tool? So first, you have to set the scope and also you have to set the concrete themes. If you are very concrete uh, in those matters, I think your output is more effective. However, the premise is that you know, during the first step, you have a lot of ideas. And then you have to pick up the ideas that you would like to drill down. And based on the selected ideas, maybe you can hold, organize a workshop that would lead to the further action. I think that gives a larger potential in this process. So rather than I just uh, tried to do everything in one one single workshop. I think reiterative or the repetitive uh, process is quite effective as well. So finally, just briefly, so this methodology should be utilized in different places. And because uh, in this way, you can sophisticate this as a tool uh, so it would be very nice to have opportunity to get together and share the output. This methodology has the aspect of democracy that everyone uh, is valued. And also, it also has the aspect of ecology. So in many cities around the world, based on those, those two aspects, I hope urban planning uh, will thrive and this tool will be further utilized. I know it's getting a little bit late in, in Latin America, so thank you so much. For those of you who are interested in, in applying, please try to oops, read, download this book. It's on World Bank OKR, so uh, the, the link is going to be available in the chat box. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, Michiko. Thank you, everyone. Hi, thank you, Haruka, Harris, Manuel, Ricardo, uh, Professor Sasaki, and Mr. Noda for fruitful discussion and insight. I could see how you're all rejoicing as a reunion from the workshop. So on those two cities, so it's it's great to good, good to see. Um, now we would like to welcome Yuko Arai on the stage to give us the commentary on what has been discussed so far in this seminar. Uh, Yuko is an urban specialist at World Bank and also a former member of TDLC who is the co-coordinator of this methodology application in Panama City. And also she is representing Inclusive Cities Knowledge Silo Breaker of World Bank. So Yuko, uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Michiko. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to the TDLC team for inviting me to provide comments for this very important initiative of the Yokohama Urban Sketchbook. I would first like to extend my huge congratulations to everyone involved in the development of this report and the approach. Uh, so the Inclusive Cities Knowledge Silo Breaker is uh, quite a mouthful. It's otherwise known as the Inclusive Cities KSB. Uh, we lead and provide support uh, to various task teams in the World Bank, mainly on three dimensions of inclusion, first spatial inclusion, then economic inclusion, and social inclusion. And I believe what we have collectively heard today on the Yokohama Urban Sketchbook is that it is a useful tool that allows urban practitioners to place spatial, economic, and social inclusion at the heart of designing urban spaces. And as brilliantly highlighted by Professor Sasaki, it is a tool that allows to translate aspirations of the individual to a collective long-term vision of the citizens. We have also witnessed that there is a cross inspiration of ideas 
So one idea that one person sketches actually spurs ideas for others, which becomes sort of a co-creation process of a vision. But that vision is a concrete area-specific vision versus gen generic wishful thinking. It's quite heartening to see um, how far this work has come. And for that, I would like to congratulate my colleague Haruka for continuing taking this effort forward um, after our time together in Japan. I still remember the day uh, when we were very excited about the potential of the Yokohama Urban Sketchbook Tool, and we visited the Yokohama City Urban Design Office. Um, at that time, it was still in Kanai, and we were speaking of our passion and interest uh, for the tool that Noda-san had uh, developed so nicely. So, uh, you know, for me, the big takeaway of, of, of this tool is that it gives a voice to everyone. And this was underscored by many of the panelists in the event today. It gives voice to the rich, to the poor, ethnic minorities, uh, those disabled, older persons and children alike. And contrary to the conventional method of oral participation in designing urban spaces, where, you know, those with the loudest voices are often most dominant in its presence, a sketch of ideas, what it does is that it puts everyone on a level playing field. And I believe this is a huge potential of this tool. And I believe that we have seen really ground truthing of this approach uh, through the experiences that we saw and heard today from Panama and Barranquilla. So if you read the document, you will also notice that the tool underscores the importance of including a variety of expertise. So it's not just the conventional urban planners or the architects, but you need to involve those working on sociology, anthropology, environment, and so much more. So having that variety of expertise also means that the tool is inherently conducive towards taking an inclusion lens to designing urban spaces. So again, we as the Inclusive Cities KSB uh, of the World Bank, we are happy to support uh, the promotion of this approach to be used by different World Bank task teams in different regions and as a unique and innovative approach uh, to inclusive development of urban spaces. I encourage everyone uh, connected to uh, this call, this event, to secure a copy and have a read through. Uh, lastly, uh, I would like to extend my appreciation to the entire fabulous CDLC team, a number of you connected uh, for stellar organization of this event as always. Thank you once again, and back over to you, Michiko. Thank you so much, Yuko. So now, uh, thank you everyone for your participation. Uh, well, we're coming in to the end of the webinar. So for the closing remarks, I would like to welcome our team lead of TDLC, Victor Mullis. Victor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Michiko. Let me start by thanking all our speakers today and also in a particular way, the work and participation of Yokohama City in making this urban design sketchbook a reality. During the last two years, our cities have experienced big changes that have allowed citizens to see their immediate environment in a different way. The lockdowns, contactless interactions, and travel restriction difficulties that we have all experienced have also produced a positive outcome after all. And they have triggered new thinking about urban planning and generated new hopes for our cities to be greener, more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. While the notion of citizens' participation in the urban design and planning process is not new, in reality, the concept is not so widely practiced. Typically, the planning process is siloed from active public participation due to the technical jargon and complicated zoning statutes that make it difficult for citizens to share their ideas and input in an effective way. When it is the local citizens who will have the most direct impact to neighborhood designs, their voices are typically not weighed enough in the decision-making process. The unique value of the Yokohama's urban design sketchbook methodology is highlighted in the way that it translates complicated urban design processes so it can be easily understood by the public while inspiring citizens to reimagine their neighborhoods. One of the core principles of the methodology is to fully capture the aesthetics, uniqueness, and humanity embodied in a city. This means working with the characteristics of the natural landscape or typology and preserving the richness of the place so that people can remain connected to the natural environment while enhancing their quality of life. The urban design and planning process is truly multidisciplinary as it requires a deep understanding of the integrated relationship that citizens share with the various makeups of the city. As citizens face and respond to the challenges of climate change, livability and sustainability, 
It is even more important to tap into the collective consciousness of the citizens to discover, understand, and integrate the public sentiments, values, hopes, and ideas in designing cities that are more inclusive and ultimately more livable by reflecting the existing local needs of the people. With this publication, we hope that more cities across the world can take advantage of this unique methodology in finding the solutions to working closely with their local stakeholders. Once again, let me thank you all of the speakers today, all the participants for being with us today, and the Government of Japan for their support to the World Bank's Tokyo Development Learning Center that has made possible this event and this publication. Thank you very much. Over to you, Michiko. Thank you, Victor. So uh, with this, we will conclude today's program. I hope you enjoyed the opportunity to learn about this community engagement tool developed in Yokohama and its possibilities in applying to other countries. So if you're interested in learning more about it, please access the link uh, on the chat box uh, to download the copy of our publication. In TDLC, we are organizing online events on a wide range of topics that our cities are faced with today. We will have an upcoming event on age ready cities in May to discuss the development of our cities in the context of an aging population. Please visit our TDLC website or follow us in Facebook or Twitter to learn more. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.